Chairman, our next witness is witness 34. This evidence appears at page two of your bundle. And the witness, Amin Ansari Fad, is testifying in his own name from Iran. His son, Farzad, was killed in the city of Behbahan on 16th November 2019. At the time, Farzad was 28 years old. Mr. Ansari Farzad, please introduce yourself, and the chairman would ask you to make your statement. In the name of God, my name is Amin Ansari Fard. Uh, I am talking from Iran, from the city of Behbahan. Hear me? Yes, I do hear you. Thank you for agreeing to help the tribunal. Um, could you repeat after me, please? Um, I solemnly declare that I will speak the truth. I uh, solemnly um, the, the swear to tell the truth. The truth and nothing but the truth. To tell the truth, uh, to help the, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Now, council will ask you some questions no. which no. will which will then be followed up with questions from the panel. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Ansari Fard, the, tribun the tribunal has received your statement, and we thank you for that. Can you please tell the tribunal when you were informed that your son, Farzad, was shot? Uh, at 2 o'clock, we uh, came back home, we called our son, and no matter how many times we uh, called him, he did not answer. We followed it up until 7 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, 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 by then, we had gone many times uh, to uh, the IRGC, uh, to the police force, etc. We wanted to know whether he had been arrested. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, he was not there. Therefore, we went to the hospital three times. We went there. The first time when we went there, they said, no, we don't have such a name. The second uh, uh, time, they said, uh, there is uh, somebody here, uh, but nobody has come to, uh, to, 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 to um, ask for him. What uh, uh, color is his T-shirt? Is it uh, green? I said, no, it's red. Then I came back home. And then um, a relative of ours said, go and look at him. Perhaps it is your son. I, uh, we went to the hospital. My brother went and looked. Uh, it was almost 7 o'clock in the afternoon, and my brother went to see him. And did you have any difficulty in retrieving the body of your son? No, I did not, we did not have any problems. They actually cooperated with us. They cooperated well. There was no uh, difficulty there. They took him uh, uh, to the for foreign, forensic medicine uh, in the capital of the province, and then they, they, we retrieved the body. They gave us back the body. The son's body was taken to Ahvaz, which is the capital of the province. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. What is Ahvaz from Behbahan? There is kilometer. 200 kilometers. There were other bodies in Ahvaz killed during the 
demonstrations. No, I didn't. Uh, uh, there were six other uh, bodies in Behbahan who had been killed on 25th of Aban. I did not see. I did, I did not even see the body of my own son that had been taken to Ahwaz. It had been taken there for a post mortem because we wanted to see with what kind of weapon he had been killed. What did the autopsy report say about the. the the, the autopsy showed the type of weapon that was used. Did the autopsy report refer to that? Yes, the autopsy showed that it had been a Kalashnikov. Uh, and it had, my, my son's head had been shot. Which force would use Kalashnikov as the standard issue? The police force, uh, uh, revolutionary guards, the militia, uh, military forces, uh, any, any of these forces would, uh, would use this kind of weapon. Were you told by the authorities as to how you should bury your son and how you, have, how you should have funeral arrangements? No, they did not say uh, anything only on the 28th of uh, Bonn at 11 o'clock in the morning, the body was delivered to us and they went away. Were you told not to publicize the killing of your son by the authorities? Yes, uh, publicity, yes. They told us to, be, to keep it quiet. Uh, or not to talk to anybody. Uh, keep it quiet. Respect uh, this. And uh, to the extent possible, we respected what they said and uh, we just buried our son. Mr. Ansarifar, did you file a complaint with the authorities about the loss of your son? Yes. Yes, in the court. What was the result of your complaint? Nothing. I, we have not had any results so far. In your statement, you refer to your daughter being harassed by the authorities for the publicity she has made and interviews she had made with the foreign media. Can you explain more about that? Yes. My uh, daughter, because uh, she wanted to seek justice for the blood of uh, her brother, she was arrested. She was taken to Ahwaz. She was in prison for seven days, and still it's ongoing. And now, uh, no, no verdict has been issued yet. It's just ongoing. Uh, have the authorities also arrested your brother? <laughs> yes. And what is the charge against your brother? At the home. The charges are that they s say uh, he has made publicity against the establishment, against the regime. And he has had contacts with outside the country in order to publicize against the regime. Thank you very much, Mr. Ansarifar. The tribunal may have some questions for you. Thank you very much for your 
testimony and um, uh, sympathies for your loss. Um, I just have a couple of questions, if I may. At the beginning of your statement, you uh, say that you, be you believe that your son had, uh, was at his workplace um, and he heard shots from inside um, the house having gone home and went outside and that's when he was struck by a bullet. Um, can I just ask where you had the information from, but don't reveal the identity of the person, but just give us an ins insight into where you got the information. It was noon, 25th of Arban. My son was seven kilometers away from the place where uh, he was shot, he was at work. Then he came home at 1, and up to 1.30 he was home. At 1.30 he heard the bullets shot, he went out to see what was going on. Our home, from where my son died and was killed, was about 100 to 150 meters, and he, within 15 to 20 minutes, that he was there. Unfortunately, we did not hear anything afterwards from him. Thank you. And 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 what was had your son been at home alone, or was he was he there with members of your family, so they were able to tell you uh, what had happened and how he'd left the house? His brothers and mother and sister were at home. They were at home. My youngest son, who had gone out, was looking for his brother. He had even seen him. He told him, why are you? He, he had told his younger brother to go home. And then he went out himself alone. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I, I just have a few additional questions. Um, firstly, with respect to your daughter, can you indicate what your daughter was charged with? Her charge, according to the officials, was publicity against the establishment. Collusion with foreign countries and, pub and uh, publishing lies and spreading lies. Thank you. And y you indicated that, that those charges were still pending. Um, are they also pending in relation to your brother who charged with similar charges? Uh. No, my younger brother was released at the first stages and not uh, and they are not pursuing the issue any further so i may say that his case is not live anymore only the case of my daughter is still live and continuing thank you and could i ask um your 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 son um what was um what was his his work at the time of the events my son was uh, installing porcelain and tiles he was at work till 1 p.m and then he went back home he went to work, went home to have lunch and go back. Unfortunately, we lost him. Thank you, and we're, we're, we, you have our, the condolences of the panel. Um, did your son have a, a wife or, or children of his own? Wait. No. And with respect to the complaint that was filed um, with the uh, Justice Department, I believe, um, 
Um, have you had any correspondence um, emanating from that complaint? And if so, what correspondence? We did not receive any correspondence. We filed a complaint, but we did not get anything back. We were never even told what to do after, what we should do, what the procedure would be. We never received any reaction to our complaint, and they did not pursue it either. And when, when exactly did you file the complaint? Was it shortly after the incidents or later? We filed our complaint, I believe, seven to eight days or ten days after the event. Um, good, good afternoon, witness. I, I have uh, questions in two areas and uh, hopefully won't take up too much of your time. The first is you mentioned that your son left the house when he heard shots fired. I'm wondering what was going on that day in town? Were there demonstrations? Were there protests? Were there just military there at the time? What was going on? If you know, obviously. I don't have complete information myself because on that day I was working myself and I was a bit I was about 500 to 600 meters away from where the shooting was taking place. I was just hearing the sound of shooting, and I could see that some banks and some places were being burnt from distance, of course. There were protests going on. There were some direct conflicts. Uh, there were a young number of people uh, and also the security officials in conflict. All right, and then my, my second area relates to the questions my uh, colleague just asked regarding a complaint that you filed. And my understanding is that um, you were invited to go to the area's intelligence office after this complaint was filed. Is that correct? Or did you go to the office after the complaint was filed? The intelligence office, I went to the intelligence office several times, but it was not in relation to our complaint. It was in connection to my daughter uh, for being in touch with abroad. I went to the intelligence office several times for the sake of my daughter, not for the complaint that we had filed. Nobody asked about our complaint. Nobody said anything about our complaint at all. Okay, then correct me if I'm wrong. My, my understanding from the statement, and these mistakes are made easily, so it, it simply to clarify was that either you or someone from the family had spoken with the intelligence office and, and said you would like them to find out who murdered your son. Do you recall that? Bonham. Yes, yes, uh, that is something that we repeated several times. We said that the individual who had killed our son should be introduced to us. Maybe it, it was an enemy. Maybe somebody intentionally killed our son. We asked them to introduce the individual, why he shot our son, why he killed our son. That is what we asked the intelligence office, but unfortunately nothing happened. They gave us no answer. They said they didn't know. And then my other understanding, again, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that at some point the intelligence office said that they were looking at the situation, but that they offered to play what's translated into English for me, and I believe the word is, is dia, and I can easily be corrected, but they offered to pay blood money, that they offered this. Is that something that happened, or do you recall that that happened? Yes, they talked about blood money. Well, that was something um, 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 
that was mentioned to all those killed uh, during Oban protests. They said that their blood money should be paid. That's all. It was a general thing that was stated. So the intelligence office didn't directly offer this. It was simply a, a general comment that was made in terms of your son. Yes, this was just a general statement. And the intelligence officer didn't tell us anything directly in this connection. Okay, thank you. You've clarified several things. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, um, please go ahead. Um, just a, f a few things I'd like to understand. What are your family traditions or religious customs about a funeral? Uh, who prepares the body normally? Well, the officials uh, prepared their corpse, and we just uh, uh, buried the body. They had done everything themselves. We did not even see what they had done. We don't know what they did to him. We just buried him. Sorry, sorry. But my question is a different one. Normally, in the family, according to your custom, your family custom, your religious custom, whose duty is it to prepare the body? Well, it's a general thing. It doesn't matter to us much. Whoever dies, the family usually goes and receives the body and does what is needed for that body before burial. That's it. Nobody outside the family would uh, deal with these issues so that the body would be just received after everything has been done. Usually the family would uh, deal with, the mat with such matters. And is it uh, a thing that the re religion says must happen? Or is it something which culture says must happen? And if, if, if I'm not clear, please tell me that the family must prepare the body. Religiously speaking, the family need to prepare the body. So would I be wrong in saying that uh, uh, the family didn't act according to the religion? Yes, we can say that. When religiously speaking, we want to deal with the body, the body should have been handed over to us. We should have prepared the body. We should have seen him at least. But they just handed him over to us and said, bury him. Did you? They didn't give us any opportunity to see him or to spend any time with him. How did you and the family feel about that? At the time, the situation was dire, and when the body was being handed over to us, we did not even understand what was going on. I cannot even recall what happened. They, we, had, we were in a very dire situation at the time. And uh, who chooses the place of burial normally? The burial place is usually the graveyard, the cemetery. Uh, but there are millions or hundreds of graveyard, graveyards, I suppose, in Iran. Who decides which graveyard you will go to? 
not sure. Well, they decided for us. We had no role in deciding where to bury our child. That, but normally, who decides? Does the family decide? Does the priest decide? Does the father decide? Normally, or the husband decides, or the wife decides, or something. Who, who would normally, in your custom, make that decision? Usually, the family decides. And in your case, in the case of your son, and I'm, I express my sympathies about him, and I'm sorry to raise all these things. Normally, who would have decided? Would it have been you alone? Or would it have been you with other members of your family? Or would it have been you after talking to the family priest? Well, I would decide after I discuss the issue with my family members. And normally, does anyone, do the authorities normally, would they say, no, you can't bury here or you can't bury there? Or normally, the family decision is followed? What happens normally? Well, the family decides and the authorities don't mind where the body is being buried. It's the family that decides. Who decided? You said the family didn't decide. The authorities decided. Um, now, where would you have wanted, the family have wanted the funeral? I'm a we wanted to bury him in the same tem cemetery, but uh, we wanted to bury him in a different section of the cemetery with which they did not agree. Tell us a little bit more, please. Um, I wanted him to be buried in the section of uh, the uh, those who had lost their lives during the war who were a victim and they said no you cannot bury him in this section you have to bury him in another section okay I i'm sorry to raise all this now i'm going to raise something else which is going to be even more painful but again i'm sorry uh, did you did you see your son's injuries. Yes. Where were the injuries? The injuries were uh, behind his head, on his neck. It, they had shot him there, and the bullet had come out of his upper lip. So it was, you, you saw, just to, to, to emphasize what you saw, you saw a wound at the back of the head by the neck area, and you saw another bullet wound, um, and... and you may not know which way it went in and where it went out, but it's what you saw, I want to know. And the other wound was above the lip, just under the nose, if I understand you properly. It was, beside, yeah, it was right beside his nose, yeah. Beside his nose. Can you remember that it was the left or the right-hand side? I've pushed uh, some. Uh, it had, he had been shot on the right side of the head and on the 
face, it had come out of the left side. I'm very, very sorry to raise all these things with you. I sympathize a great deal. Please be assured that if it was not necessary, I would have not done so. So please go in peace. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, just to follow up the question about diyat or blood money, do you know anyone of the family victims uh, were offered this diyat uh, lately? Yes, I do. Thank you. Thank you. I think that's all the questions from the panel. Uh, Council, uh, do you have any follow-up questions? Yes, sir. If I may. Mr. Ansarifar, do you have provided some documents to the tribunal? Is that correct? Yes. Can you explain what is this document? Uh, this uh, document is the death certificate of my son. By the investigation of the police department of your province. Is Mr. Ansarifar there? Mr. Chairman, this, we will provide you with a translation of this document. It's a report by the uh, police regarding the, actually they refer to the killing of Mr. Farzad Ansari Far, saying that the, they have noticed that he was killed by a bullet from, issued, uh, it's an uh, eight millimeter bullet from a Klashnikov which was shot from a distance of 40 meters, and it created a hole in the body of a centimeter, and all the other details about how it entered the body and how it went, came out of it. And it says the bullet went through the skull of the deceased from the right side to the left side and came out from down to up. I think we, we have lost Mr. Ansari Farad connection. Oh, yes, he's here. Mr. Ansari Farad, do you have anything to add to that report of the police? Can you add your view on the police document? Yes. Uh, yes, uh, this uh, bullet that was uh, uh, shot uh, uh, was uh, um, uh, fired from uh, uh, on top of a guest house where uh, the uh, police force was stationed. Sorry, that's, that's what the report says. Yes, that, that's, the, that's the report, report about that. Anything else you... Yes, and for the uh, anniversary, they did not allow us uh, uh, to hold an anniversary for him. They said it's because of the pandemic, because of the corona. They had destroyed the road, and uh, they did not allow us to have uh, a memorial for his anniversary. Uh, and they also put set fire to the uh, house and the um, car of my daughter. 
uh, and uh, of course, uh, the, it's been with the Ministry of uh, Information for two, three years now, and they do not give it back. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, no further questions from Council. Uh, just a follow-up question to your very last uh, question. You indicate that they set fire to your daughter's house and car, I believe. Who is they? Who, who, um, who set fire? We don't know who exactly. We just know uh, that it was not even the 40th day of uh, his uh, demise that they set fire to the car. And just one follow-up question on that, if I may. Um, did you file any complaints with regards to that? Yes. And did you hear anything back? Nah. No. Okay. No, and they did not follow it up at all. Thank you. I'm sorry, I, I, I have one more question. How tall was your son? Do you have any idea? It was almost 175 centimeters. Can I just ask one more, one more question about uh, your daughter? What it is? Um, wh why is she being focused upon? Um, what is it that she's uh, doing that um, the authorities don't seem to like? Uh, well, uh, truth be told, my daughter is only after finding out why her brother was killed. She is just seeking justice for the blood of her brother that was shed. And they say no, you, they want to silence her. Thank you. Uh, one more question. And I, I also want to um, convey my condolences and um, thank you for being patient with us. What would justice look like for your family? Could you repeat your question, he says. Of course, uh, you, you said your daughter was seeking justice for the blood that was shed of her brother. What does justice look like for your family? What would that mean to seek to receive justice in this in this instance? Uh, ju justice for us is to know who who shot our son. We want he, them to deliver him to us. Why did he call, uh, kill our son? By whose orders he killed our son? That's what we want to know. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I don't think there are any more questions from the panel or council. Um, thank you very much for taking the time, Mr. Ansar Rifar. Um, we understand it cannot have been easy, and we really appreciate uh, you sharing your experience and testifying before the tribunal. Thank you. Sorry. He, he says, I'm sorry, but he doesn't say why. Why are you, why are you expressing so, sorrow? Why are you sorry? Yeah. Me <clears> to <throat> yes, I. I want to ask a question. Uh, the, the, the security forces said uh, that person was a, a disrupt, 
doctor and they uh, checked the cameras and that's uh, uh, what they have said that I have come to. But our uh, family says, show us so that we know uh, whether, it, what does, the difference does it make whether it was a protester or he was not? Uh, did they have any orders to kill him or not? Thank you. Thank you very much. I think that um, any questions from Council following, following up? No further questions. Thank you very much again for attending and giving evidence, Mr. Ansarifah.